Hey guys, so I just had to make this video because it involves one of my favorite artists. Um, so lately, the rap artist Nas has gotten into some pretty hot water with another artist known as uh, 21 Savage. And if you don't know 21 Savage, um, he basically did a Freshman Cypher 2016, I think it was. And, um, you know, he, he did a few of his own independent, um, independent albums, um, even after that freshman cypher. And, uh, while he was on that cypher, he was also paired with, you know, people like Little Uzi, uh, Denzel Curry, uh, Kodak Black, I think is what the entire lineup was. And, uh, so... You can already tell just from that lineup alone, he, he comes from a, um, a very particular set of rap. You know, um, I had just previously made a video, or I had just previously made a video talking about, you know, my problem with rap gatekeeping. And I will refrain from, from kind of trying to blame his genre of music. Um, to what he had to say about Nas and other 90s rappers, right? So, um, what I really wanted to address was something in particular um, that he had uh, said. Um, he said something along the lines, well, really, he, he was, I, I believe he was on some sort of podcast or something called the uh the clubhouse and um i'm not exactly 110 percent sure what the clubhouse is but um anyways he was on the clubhouse i don't know if that's a podcast or what exactly if it airs on tv the radio i have no fucking clue but uh you know 21 savage he, he was kind of lumped into this discussion because as you can hear from the audio uh, there's a lot going on many fucking people talking at once and it even got to a point where i think the host of the show or maybe it was even the co-host of the show had to uh reiterate you know one mic you know we we need someone on just one mic speaking because that's just how many people were talking no, man. I don't feel like he's relevant. I just feel like no, he got no. That, he got none of them are relevant. Man, he's not. He's not relevant. He just has a loyal right ass back, fan base. Thank you. He just has a loyal fan base that that, and he still make good ass music. But they don't like, have a core fan relevant, base. Right, what, what, what? He said, "Name me a rapper from the '80s and '90s that that can still maintain relevancy," which is a good point because a lot of a lot of people. You know, obviously, you know, Snoop Dogg, you know, Ice Cube, you know, you know, just people, people that have already kind of been there, done that. Um, these people don't drop a ton of music anymore. Um, Snoop Dogg doesn't drop a ton of music. Ice Cube, you know, he, he's more concerned with like the business aspect of his life. I don't think. I don't think he drops a ton of music in it. Well, I mean, he, I know for a fact he doesn't, but, um, you know, just, just people, people like that, you know, uh, people that have already pretty much finished their careers, you know, people like Run DMC and, you know, other, others like that. And he, he had a good point, you know, there aren't a ton of people, um, that, are from that era that even still make music anymore. And I, I will have to, you know, concur with him on that because I, I personally can't think of too many artists from that era who, who are still to this day making consistent. Now that that's, that's a very key thing right there. Consistent music. Now let's look at 21 Savage's uh, catalog. Uh, 21 Uzi came out in 2017. Slaughter King came out in 2015. Slaughter Tape came out in 2015. 
Without Warning, uh, which I don't know if that was even his album. I, I, I think that was uh, Migo's album, I think. Well, they, they used the same album cover anyways, but Without Warning came out in 2017. Savage Mode, which I personally haven't heard of, came out in 2020. It's an album. <laughs> came out in 2017, and the most recent album I've heard from him, which is I Am, I Was, came out in 2018. That's the last album I have heard throughout its entirety um, of 21 Savage. So, you know, he, he has a he has another song. Uh, I'm not sure if it's an album, but I, I do know that it's a song. Um, Her Loss that came out in 2022, which I'll be getting to that later. But, you know, um, as, as he was kind of discussing this with, with these people of the clubhouse, quote unquote, the name Nas got brought up, and I don't know if Twenty One Savage kind of was just in the in the mix of the conversation, you know, like kind of just everybody was talking at once. And I don't know if he if he necessarily meant to say this about Nas, but um, he said that Nas was not relevant. And again. I just want to reiterate that I'm not 100% sure if that if that is exactly what he meant was to say that Nas is, you know, irrelevant, but he does go on to kind of reinforce what he said by saying that, you know, people like Nas, all they have is a very dedicated fan base, which is not all that accurate, you know, if 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 what if if what 21 Savage is trying to say is that, you know, the only reason Nas still, you know, makes these records and gets hits on these records and, you know, sells out, you know, even some modern artists with little to no publicity. Um, that, that just, I'm sorry, man, that, that just is not accurate. You, you can't make the numbers and sales that Nas has made with an old, dedicated fan base that that has been riding with you since the 90s people that are like 30 40 even 50 years old i mean that you just can't right because that that's just that's just an old era of people and you know let's let's look at Nas's discography i think it's called so illmatic let's let's put some things into perspective right King's Disease 2 came out in 2021. Magic came out in 2021. Uh, you know, God's Son came out in 2002. Nazir came out in 2018. I Am came out in 1999. Life is Good came out in 2012. Distant Relatives came out in 2010. That, that was a... Um, that was a collaboration he did with Damian Marley, I think. Uh, Street Disciples, or Street Disciple, came out in 2004. You know, um, Hip Hop is Dead came out in 2006. Um, the Lost Tapes, I think, came out in like, or no, before Lost Tape came out in 2013. Nostradamus came out in 1994, or 1999. So I mean you can you can already see like right here that Nas is somebody who likes to drop one project or two projects sometimes in the same year. You know, he dropped like two projects in 1999. Uh the Lost Tapes 2 came out in 2019 and uh you know, King's Disease 3 had just came out in 2022. Uh, King's Disease 1 had came out in 2020. I mean, you know, I, I would say he's still a pretty consistent artist, you know, for, for somebody that's been making music since the late 90s. I would say that he, he's been, you know, pretty consistent. I mean, he has joints called Untitled from 2008. Uh, like I said, you know, Soulmatic Instrumentals came out in 2014. 
Uh, like I said, you know, before he lost tapes two, came out in 2013. So he, he's been, he's been dropping, you know, semi consistently or as consistent as you possibly could be. If you were somebody coming up from, you know, the late nineties, early two thousands. And, uh, he probably doesn't have as many as say like Eminem, but I mean, that's just a different conversation in and of itself. But today we're going to be just be comparing Nas and 21 Savage. I mean, you know, most of these only have like maybe a year or two apart from each other. I mean, you know, from 1996 to 1999, you know, 1994 to 1996, uh, 2001 to 2002, and from 2002 to 2004, uh, 2004 to 2006, I mean, 2006 to 2008, and from 2008 to 2010, 2010 to 2014, I mean, you, you get what I mean, right? I mean, it's, it's just a few years apart, but I mean, you look at 21 Savage, right? Slaughter Tapes, 2015. Slaughter King 2015. Uh, and then there's like a bit of a gap from 2015 to 2017, which is about a year or two apart from each other. Uh, well, no, uh, Savage Season came out in 2016. And then uh, there was there was a bit of a gap between that, you know, um, his re his uh his album I am I was released in 2018 to uh the new single that I, I think it's a single her loss with Drake in 2022 so that's like that's like a four year gap right there um a lot of people you know when you want to talk about relevancy you you know um. You, you have to maintain a consistent basis. And in my honest opinion, you know, 21 Savage has not been doing this long enough to, to have the same level of, of credibility or the same level of relevancy to even be compared to someone like Nas. You know, like, of course their discographies are going to be different because, you know, Nas has been, has been rapping since 1991, Illmatic. And I think the earliest I see on here on uh, 21 Savage's discography is like 2015 or, yeah, 2015. And everything, you know, above 2015, you know, uh, Slaughter King, uh, Without Warning, uh, 21 Uzi, you know, 21 Gang, uh, Savage Season, Savage Mode, uh, Savage Mode 2. I mean, if you look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's only 13 albums. Now, compare this with, with Nas. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 12, 18, 24, 32. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's over 32 albums just in Nas's discography alone. And I think, you know, com if, we're, if we're comparing discography... And albums, Nas has been just as much relevant, if not more relevant, than Twenty One Savage has been in terms of dropping projects. But uh, Twenty One Savage did make a good point, um, just from the little snippet that that I have personally heard. You know, he said when you turn on, you know, music from the nineties like Tupac, fucking Biggie, and all these other people, he said, you know, you don't necessarily sit there and be like, damn, you know, I listened to this because it sold over 20, you know, it sold over 20,000 records or whatever the case may be. You listen to it because it makes you feel good. You know, that's what he said. And I agree with that, you know, kind of going back to my, my previous video, you know, where I had kind of ranted on, you know, 
people in a particular scene in hip hop being compared to like Eminem, you're comparing them to someone who they never wanted to be compared to, you know, but that isn't to say that there aren't people out there who want to analyze lyrical music. There are people out there that want to do that, but at the same time, there are people out there who just want to listen to music, you know, possibly more so for the beat or the, the rhyme scheme, you know, whatever the case may be. It doesn't have to be the most lyrical shit in the world. You know, um, that's the whole point of the video that I had made. So I do agree with, with 21 Savage on that point. But, um, I don't know, man. He, he, he just, uh, and, you know, I, I don't really, I don't really lump him. Uh, I don't really put him into this opinion all too much, really. I don't think, I don't think he would die on a hill for what he said. <clears throat> Because obviously, I mean, what he said has its own problems, obviously. But um, I do, I do think that that he was coming from a from a pretty genuine place when he said, you know, name me an artist from the '80s and '90s that that can still consistently drop and maintain relevancy. Because I mean. You know, DJ Academics in his video, you know, I, I don't take a lot of what DJ Academics says seriously because he, he's a fence sitter, and I personally do not like fence sitters, but, you know, he said, uh, well, how, how can you maintain relevancy if, if it ain't about sales? I don't know. I mean, how do you maintain, I mean, how does Snoop Dogg maintain relevancy because he hasn't dropped a ton of music? How does Ice Cube maintain his relevancy because he hasn't dropped a ton of music? They're businessmen. You know, Snoop Dogg there for a while got into like the culinary shit. He got into like the, the marijuana in California shit. You know, he was a businessman. He's on commercials. He's on fucking TV. He's on the internet. He's doing fucking streams on um, Twitch. I mean, <laughs> I think I think DJ Academics kind of shot himself in the foot when he said that because there are other ways to maintain relevancy that isn't just by sales, you know. And um, you know, King's Disease Two sold forty thousand copies. You know, her loss sold four hundred and four hundred uh four hundred and four thousand copies. And yet, the both of them are still right there side by side. You know? Um, but, uh, you know, like I said before, 21 Savage at this point in time in his career is not in a position to really be saying anything like that. Because before, before he got on to her loss with Drake, he was kind of fading into obscurity. I mean, really, he was. You know, it, it's kind of like I said, you know, the, the, last, the last project I heard of, you know, 21, uh, 21 Savage was uh, I Am, I Was, which dropped in 2018. And... You know, Savage Mode 2, which was dropped in 2020, that went under radar for me, you know? Um, some of his newer shit, like um, Spiral, that to me personally went under the radar. Savage Mode 2, to me, went under the radar. I personally have not heard anything from 21 Savage until her loss with Drake, which kind of tells you maybe the performance of 21 Savage's last few albums haven't maybe been all that great because I personally have not heard anyone talk about them. I personally have not heard anyone fucking listening to them. You know, maybe the performance was just bad. You know, maybe, maybe they were just bad albums that just flew under the radar. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't think he was in a position to really say anything like that. 
especially by this point in his career, because it's like the only reason you were in the clubhouse talking about this topic is because you just did a record with Drake. You know, Drake is the reason why something that you were on hit 404,000 copies sold. So I I just I just think I just think it's it's kind of ridiculous how he can talk down on somebody else's career, you know, like Nas being like, oh, you know, he he just he just has a consistent fan base. What about you? You know, what about I mean, <laughs> what about your consistent fan base? I mean, what what would you call your fan base that listened to Savage Mode too? What would you call your fan base that listened to fucking Spiral? You know, a lot of... And I feel like a lot of people are in the same boat that I'm in. A lot of people probably <clears throat> haven't heard of 21 Savage since his album. A lot of people are probably in the same boat I'm in when I say that I haven't heard anything from him since I am, I was in 2018. You know? So... I don't know. I just I just thought it was kind of poor taste. You know, here's Nas concluding his trilogy album, King's Disease. And, you know, Nas did little to no promotion of this album whatsoever. And it's still probably going to hit 100,000 sales. He made one post on Instagram about it. And I think he made one post on Twitter about it. That's all. And compare that to like Drake's promotion for her loss. Or compare that to literally any other rapper's promotion whenever they drop a project. And he released it for free on YouTube. So, that's all I really wanted to say. I'm going to wrap this video up so that it's not like fucking 30 minutes long. But anyways, that's all I wanted to say.